We're looking at the aggregation framework in MongoDB. And this clip is going to focus on what are called buckets. And in MongoDB, there's a feature where we can um, use buckets to basically compartmentalize data. So it uses this term boundaries, and you'll see what that means in a moment. So let's look at the question behind this. It says, consider all the movies and determine how many movies fall, fall into each of the following brackets or categories with respect to their runtime value. So it says a runtime value of zero or more, but under, under 80 minutes. And the second category is a value of 80 or more, but under 130 minutes. And the last category is movies with a runtime of 130 minutes or more. And when we're doing this, we need to be aware of the fact that there are some movies that may not have a runtime value. And the number of movies that belong to that category should also appear in the results. So that uh, relates to this value down here, our keyword default, where movies don't have a runtime. And the role of that will become important in a moment. So the, the aggregation pipeline here, when we execute it, um, it's going to just give us uh, some values. And then when we look at the values, we can then maybe talk about the syntax. So what you can see in the results here is that in the category 0 to 80, so the first document of the results, um, that, that category there from 0 up to 80, but not including 80, has 554 documents. So there's a count of 554 documents. The second category between 80 and starting at 80, but under 130, has 1,131 1, documents. And the final category above 130 minutes, or sorry, 130 minutes or above, has a count of um, 178 documents. And then there are a total of 432 documents that don't have a time, a runtime value. In other words, they are null. The, the, null the, the runtime value for those documents, for 432 of them, is null. And uh, when you're building the, the uh, using this bucket feature, uh, in this simplified version of it, we have a dollar sign bucket, and then there's, th there's three components shown here. There's the group by, and we're grouping by runtime because runtime is, we're looking at, we're, we're trying to put the runtime values into these brackets or categories or bands. And then what we have are boundaries and the boundaries dictate the, uh, what band a particular movie falls into based on its runtime. So the first uh, slot here is where it says zero. So it's zero comma 80. And that means any mo movie of zero or above, but under 80, will fall into the first bracket. Then we start at the 80, so anything from 80 or 80 or above, up to, but not including 130, will be in the second band. And from 130 upwards, um, so in other words, at the, any value above 130, that's why infinity is the term here, will fall into the third bracket. And the fourth bracket, or category we have to be concerned about is this default one, where movies who aren't timed, where they go. So that, that line of code is really important, as you'll see in a moment. So in our uh, results here, we have four documents being produced, the three categories that uh, where it actually is a time value, and then the fourth one, movie not timed, is all of those for where the, um, the runtime value is null. So the question is, uh, what would happen if we left out this default, uh, this line of code here where movie isn't timed? So how would our aggregation pipeline behave? So what we're just going to do briefly is we're just going to take out that line of code. I'm just going to paste it down here for a minute and execute the pipeline just with the two lines. So then you'll appreciate the importance of the, um, the default movie not timed line in the, in the aggregation pipeline. So when we do this, we're going to clear our screen and we get an error message. Okay. So the error message, uh, while well, it can be cryptic enough to understand, it says uh, that there's a, a switch. It says, could not find a matching branch for an input and no default was specified. So in other words, what that's saying to us is that, that there was movies found that didn't fall into any of the, the bands listed, any of the boundaries listed, and they had nowhere to go. Okay, so because they had nowhere to go, uh, Mongo basically crashed the aggregation pipeline. So when we put back that line of code, it gives those movies that don't have a value, that don't have a runtime value, it gives them somewhere to go. 
And so it's a safety net, really. So when we re-execute the query, we'll see that it runs again perfectly normally. So what we have to be aware of in this query, I said, is that there's some movies that have no runtime value. So we have to deal with them. So as well as setting up our boundaries, we deal with those for whom there is no runtime value. So there's another way you can approach that particular problem and uh, get around the runtime value issue that we saw in the last query, last version. So in question 23, it says, we consider only movies that have a runtime value and calculate how many movies fall into each of the following brackets or categories with respect to their runtime value and against the same three bands. So I won't go into that in detail. But the bit that you do need to take note of is this first line of code here in the aggregation pipeline where we say match. And if you look at the line of code, it says match runtime where it's not equal to null. In other words, where it's not null. So we're automatically at the match stage, eliminating any documents, uh, any movies for whom runtime is null. And therefore our default line of code, which went below the boundaries in the last version of the query, doesn't have to be, is, is not included in this case. So if we run this query, what we'll see, or this pipeline, sorry, what we'll see is that we get three documents back. So we're ignoring those that don't that are null for the runtime value. So we're only worried about the three brackets or the three bands that are laid down in the question. 0 to 80, 80 to 130, and then 130 or higher. So we've we've dealt with the null um the null runtimes before it gets near the bucket st uh, stage in the aggregation pipeline. So if we're anyways doubtful about what we've just done, we could just do a double check on our answers by First of all, running a count of how many movies there are. And then we're running a count of how many movies that are, have a null value for runtime. And lastly, a count of how many movies um, don't have a roll, null value, are not null for runtime. So those, va those values should then be able to, they should tally nicely for us. So we'll run those three little find operations. And you see there's two 295 movies in total in the, da in the database, in the collection, sorry. And there's 432 of those that for, for whom the null, the runtime value is null. And th that ties in, if you look back at the uh, answer to the earlier question, you'll see that the, the movie's not timed um, value is 432. And there, there's 1863 that have a, a runtime value. And if you add 1863 to 432, uh, you're, go you're going to get 2295. So that's uh, some early simple aspects of um, the the buckets, uh, buckets in MongoDB. So they allow us basically break our data into brackets or categories and then do, do calculations based on that. So in this case, we're getting the number of documents that are coming back. So in the two queries you've seen so far, we're counting the documents. And if you look at the results, you've seen the word count um, as the in, the in the values, in the output. Whereas this slight variation of the question has given me a bit more control over the field name in the documents generated. So instead of count appearing as the, as the default field name, we're going to just replace it with uh, an alternative name, number of movies per bucket. So to achieve that and to guarantee that the results appear like that, I'll just run the query first and then talk about the detail a little bit. So you can see here is for each uh, of the out documents generated, um, we have the zero and it, then it says number of movies per bucket, 554 and so on for the 80s, same label on the same label on the field, number of movies per bucket. And that's achieved by including the output here. So output followed by the actual, we'll say the, the uh, user chosen where the user, where the user chooses the field name for the, the count. Okay. So previously the, in the two versions, the query looked at already or the pipeline looked at it already, it just appeared as count um, because that's the default. Whereas now by putting in output here, I have got control over the field names that's used to uh, accumulate the count. So that's why it now appears as a uh, number of movies per bucket. And again, some colon one, as we've seen in many of the previous examples, will do a count for us. So the next stage to go is to take a query and build a bit more on the, the, um, the bucketing idea. So this question, slightly different question, so we'll read through it in full. It says, considered movies that were filmed in two countries. 
and calculate the number of movies the and the average and maximum runtime values values for these movies. And again, it's the same three time slots, the th same three runtime slots. So, and again, we have to deal with movies that don't have um, for whom the runtime value is null. So what you can see here is in this aggregation pipeline, we have a match stage. So we're only dealing with, uh, it says movies that were filmed over two countries. So it's countries is an array, and we're looking for an array, an array of with size two. And then at the, in the bucket stage of the pipeline, we're grouping by runtime. The boundaries are as agreed in previous examples. I've put back my default of movie not timed, because I need to deal with movies that uh, have, a, have a null value for the runtime. And then in my output, I now have three fields. I have my average runtime per bucket, so it's dollar sign AVG runtime. Then the max runtime per bucket, I, and it's that's dollar sign max runtime. And lastly, the number of movies per bucket is dollar sign sum colon one. So we're getting to a, a more uh, powerful, I kind of I suppose a more detailed version of, of the bucketing idea. And in this case, the documents generated in the output, we have our three our three main categories from zero to 80, from 80 to 130, from 130 to infinity, and then those for whom it's null is the fourth category. And each of those uh, four documents, well, obviously the first three are the only ones who really count because the fourth one is all nulls. For the first three, we have, for the zero to 80 bracket, we have the average runtime per bucket of 38 point something, the max runtime per bucket of 78, and the number of movies per bucket of 14. So that's a quick look at how to use the dollar sign bucket feature in uh, MongoDB. Now there's, there's more variations of bucketing as you'll see in one or two other clips. But that's the initial uh, introduction to buckets where we use dollar sign bucket and how it works. So the one thing that I didn't mention so far that you need to be aware of is the data types in the boundaries. So these are all, all the values here, all the movies that have a, um, a runtime it's the same data type that applies. If there was variations of the data type, we'd have uh, we'd be we'd be in trouble. So that's another factor to bear into bear to take into mind or to to consider when you're using um, buckets. So that's the end of the clip.